I'm uh, Kevin Cameron and I've set up a little display here. I wanted to make sure I had plenty of cam lobes with which to demonstrate various ways in which valve mechanism works. This camshaft comes from a Merlin V12 of the kind that powered hurricanes and spitfires in the Battle of Britain and it is a long drink of water. There's 24 lobes there. Okay, the first thing is an automotive pushrod valve train. Automotive engines usually use flat tappets. The cam lobe, these are lobes, rotates and pushes this tappet up. The pushrod, which has ball ends on both ends so that misalignment can be tolerated. The pushrod transmits the force from the cam lobe to a rocker arm, pushes on the rocker arm, which is pivoted here in the middle, causing this motion. And the far end of the rocker arm pushes the valve open. Bear in mind that we want the tappet and the whole valve mechanism to be under the control of the camshaft at all times. The cam does not push the valve open and then the valve springs snap the valve shut. The valve would never be able to tolerate that kind of violent seating. What has to happen is that the valve mechanism accelerates the valve off of its seat, it reaches the top of its lift and stops, then the spring begins holding it, the spring holding it against the cam profile reaccelerates it back towards its seat. As it nears the seat, the cam slows the valve motion down so that the valve goes back onto its seat at a survivable speed of, say, two feet per second. In racing pushrod valve trains, such as in NASCAR, where they do the most wonderful things with them, they used to consider five bounces after the valve closing as being okay. Because when you look at this thing, this is really a trampoline. It's a spring. It's, it's flexible. And it has this person standing on the trampoline. So that as the valve seats, the person tries to keep going, causing the valve head to be elastically deformed, after which it snaps back, jumps off its seat, and may bounce once or twice more. That's at 9,000 RPM. In Harley-Davidson's, the tappet has a little roller. The end of the tappet is cleft, there's a little pivot axle, and there's a roller there that bears against the camshaft. But the principle is the same. The cam pushes the tappet up, the tappet pushes the pushrod, the pushrod pushes the rocker arm, and the rocker arm pushes the valve. These parts are from a 455 Oldsmobile. This is the much storied inverted bucket tappet and you can see why they talk about it as being an inverted bucket. It's a little cup. Normally when it's installed the valve is in the cylinder head with its stem upward, the head of the valve facing the piston down here. The valve spring is here, the retainer and its little collets are there and this fits down over the valve spring and the cam lobe is up here an overhead cam. It pushes directly on this tappet which pushes the valve open. This is a lot less mass in motion than all of this, which is why a pushrod and rocker system needs a lot stiffer springs than does an overhead valve system. Now this inverted bucket tappet was used in Formula One and other high performance racing cars until some people began making higher lift cams. They kept making the lobe taller. And finally the lobe hung out over the edge of the tappet and began to scrape the edge. So then they said, well, no problem. We'll throw those tappets away. We'll get ones that are big enough so that the cam lobe doesn't go over the edge. And we'll bore the cylinder head out for those bigger tappets. That's exactly what happened to the Suzuki GS-based pro stock motorcycle drag race engine. 
Finally, they bored out for big tappets until there was no more metal to bore. Then they had to start making their own cylinder heads with larger tappet guides. But the easy road to success is the finger follower. This one is from a BMW S1000RR. This end, this little arc-shaped piece, bears against the valve stem tip. And the cam lobe, which is as wide as this, bears against this radius pad. And this goes on to a rod that passes through all of the finger followers in the cylinder head. This, being much lighter than this, can operate at a higher RPM. And that's why in MotoGP and in Formula One, finger followers are generally used. Not only are they very light, lighter than traditional inverted bucket tappets, but it's easy to change this if you've made the cam lobe taller to make this wear track a little bit longer so that you can accommodate the increased lift. So that is my short review on various valve mechanisms. Push rod, tappet, rocker arm, and valve. Inverted bucket tappet sits down over the springs, fairly light, and the finger follower, lightest of all.